I went to pick the vehicle up. So once we pulled in and got the volunteers to look at it, they thought it was in really bad shape. <laughs> Ain't nothing compared to the last one we did. This one's gonna be easy. Tim may change his tune after the build team tears into these antique body panels. My theory on the old vehicles is, hope for the best, but you better be prepared for the worst because you never know what the paint's hiding. Whoever touches it last is probably gonna get blamed for whatever they did or didn't do. So you wanna start fresh, take it all the way down to bare metal, just to make sure that Shane's truck's gonna last for many, many years. And as the dust fills the air, more and more rough spots appear. This has been about five hours and it is not as fun as it looks or appears on TV. I kind of don't like to go see Jason because every time I go over there, he's totally covered in dust. Looks like he's been rolled in flour. Man, here's another patch we got to fix. So many patches that Tim called on Ethan from Floyd Brothers Customs. One of six brothers, Ethan grew up hanging out in the shop with his older brother, Kyle. When Kyle passed away, Ethan realized that he would carry on the family tradition. He taught me a lot about cars and business and everything. You know, he just taught me about life. He helped raise me in a way, and definitely that has a lot of influence in, in the, what I do and why I do it. Matt and Ethan Floyd, along with high school friend Nick Van Beek, took an old corn crib and converted it into Floyd Brothers Custom Shop. Many of their projects reflect the agricultural heritage of the Iowa farmland, like this 47 international grain hauler, which they restored for their father. Our vintage farm truck needs major fender surgery. I found a good solid quarter inch of uh, filler in here. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it all out, make it a little more square so it's easier to weld. Make sure I get all that rust out of there too. There's plenty of metal work to go around. So Eric Stanley from Anderson Classics and Customs helps Ethan patch the fenders. A lot of the old pickup trucks are notorious for having rotten cab corners. You can see there's a rust hole back here and a repair here that somebody's filled full of lead at one time. We got this replacement panel from LMC. We're gonna put up there, trim down, cut out, get rid of this old stuff and weld that in. And to do the cutting, there's many different tools that you can use from Matco. But my tool of choice, since we've got plenty of air here at the tech center, is this five inch reversible cutter and sander. This tool is one of my favorites because it's lightweight, it's easy to feather the trigger, and it's reversible. And it's not quite as violent as the electric one. So I'm gonna hold this patch panel up. I'm gonna take my marker and draw a line around it. I'm gonna remove the panel. I'm gonna take my cutoff wheel and cut the piece out that I need. And then I will hold the panel up there, butt weld it instead of lap welding it. Tack weld it, moving around so I don't warp the panel. And once I'm all fully welded, I will switch grinding wheels, grind it down, make sure there's no pinholes that I missed. If there is, I'll go back and hit them with the welder again. Then once I'm all done, I'll switch to another wheel with a 36 grit flat wheel and prep the whole area for body repairs. The old F1 bed the family purchased would have taken over 200 man hours to rework. Instead, Tim ordered all new bed pieces from LMC. Some of the old beds bolt together with their bed sides, but these weld together. So we bolted the braces down first to find the locating where everything goes. Uh, I'm gonna punch some holes in the front panel for the bed, clamp it all down before we weld it, run tape measure, make sure it's square, and then we'll weld it together. We're making it basically a half-ton pickup truck. It's gonna have a shorter bed on it because I really don't think Shane's gonna haul much. He says he might drive it to the construction site every once in a while, but I bet he doesn't haul much more than a hard hat in the back of this thing. Whatever Shane's cargo may be. How you doing, man? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It'll roll around on some stylish treads, thanks to the guys from Best One Tire. We brought some Potenza RE760s. They're Bridgestone's race-inspired, ultra-high performance tires. Awesome. Well, this truck's gonna spend a lot of time on the street, and based on what he had on there before, this is definitely an improvement. Thanks for bringing it by, man. Thank you. I'll get somebody to load these up on some wheels, and we'll be good to go. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good one. All right, John, I got your tires. Next, major fitment issues stall the project and our A-team of volunteers show their custom fab skills when Search and Restore continues. It's okay guys, here's a list. If you're needing anything to do today, just pick something off the list and tackle it. We have new bear claw latches to make the cab safer, to start the exhaust. So by the end of the week, we gotta have all that done, the exhaust finished, 
all the body repairs done and the body ground as much as we're gonna grind. Bring it in, come on. Team track, let's go. One, two, three, team track! Right right right. What they just did is awful close to a high five. <laughs> Ian was a little worried to help on this project, but it's not being a four-wheel drive vehicle, but Ian's skills can work on any type of vehicle. Oops, a daisy. He jumped in, started mounting up the motor and tranny, and he's got it just about done. If we can take that body and set it back on here, like it will take five minutes even, and it's worth doing, you know? <laughs> you guys get over there? Once the cab is on the chassis, Tim quickly realizes something isn't right. I'm gonna swing this closed. I need a screwdriver. This could be a setback for the volunteers with a tight deadline. Because we're always in a hurry around here. We didn't put the body on the frame to weld the floor in. We're supposed to have the body on and weld the floor in. We didn't. This is a pickup truck. It'll move around. After several attempts to fit the doors, Tim does something he didn't want to do. OK, I'm going to slice the floor. What does cutting the floor do? fixing what we should have done it right the first time. Okay, hold on, hold on. Just took some tweaking. Yeah, it took us about three hours to get it fit, but you gotta get everything fit right. We're building this truck right, something that all of us will be proud with at the end of the project, so you gotta have the door gaps right, and the body lines right, and everything. It's not just a TV car. Put it together, zip screw it, duct tape it, two-sided tape, whatever. No, this is a legit truck. With the cab and chassis squared away, the volunteers get back to the grind. Ian and Matt from Floyd Brothers start by mocking up the exhaust. Flowmaster stepped up and provided us with exhaust tubes and an HP2 muffler. What's in here? It's not easy weaving the exhaust around the frame, but Ian's got a backup plan. No, you don't even put stacks on your stuff. Would look cool though. Man, you must be missing Chris. <laughs> His alternate solution is truly handcrafted. So in order to get it past the four lane, past the rear end, around the coilovers, past the gas tank, the only way to do it is through the frame. Plasma cutter! This is a piece of axle tubing. So there's gonna be one real off-road part on this truck. Tim will never know. So what we got here is a universal brake pedal assembly from Kugel. They make a lot of neat stuff for high-end street rods and hot rods. It also comes with a built-in brake light switch right on the pedal. I use their brake pedals on a lot of projects. On this, we're gonna put it through the firewall and we'll have a nice chrome booster and master cylinder so it'll be easy for Shane to service. Rock Valley Antique Auto Parts came through with a stainless steel 18-gallon gas tank for this 48 Ford pickup. With a couple of measurements and some drilling, the tank is bolted up to the frame. So we called our partners at Summit. We ordered a little bit of everything from them, from a battery tray to battery cables, master disconnect switches, gauges, engine brackets, wire looms, some pretty master cylinder and booster, cooling fan, torque converter, flywheel, and even adjustable fuel sender, all from the same place. Very convenient. And now the fenders. Looks better already, just put some cool wheels on it. That's a huge wheel opening. That'll look silly rolling down the Philly Turnpike. So using the rear fender as a guide, it was Eric's idea to create some templates to help close the gap. Good. It's gonna look good. Let's put our pattern up here. We want it eight inches more. A hair back. Roll through here, very little bit through here. I do light marks where I know where them it needs to be light, heavy, darker, and closer. So I just remember once I get to the machine how it works. See what that does is put an arc through that metal. See that? So when the metal's relaxed, flat piece of steel when it's relaxed, it's flat. But you want it to kind of be relaxed in the shape of the fender so it's not always forcing itself after you weld it on. A little slip roll, there we go. Match it right up. And on both sides, 3 8 rod is bent up and welded on to make the modified fenders stronger than the originals. And with everything prepped, Tim will cut and use the technique of butt welding the custom piece to the fender so it now matches the rear. 
Because the original wheel opening was so tall and so big, now that we've shortened it and made it match the wheel, we're gonna cut along this line. and make a body line here so it matches the rear fenders. We're gonna use a couple sticks of welding rod welded together here, bridge up this gap, and make a body line across here. Chris Mall from Billy Bob Customs actually emailed me on my Facebook page wanting to come and help on the show. I saw that he was uh, needing volunteers to come on this show and, and I just thought it'd be a great opportunity. And I knew a little bit by looking at his pictures what he could do and what he couldn't. Man, he can do a little bit of everything. I think the body lines on the front fenders, you're not even going to realize that they weren't there originally. But with that body line, it's just like it's supposed to be there. Next, more volunteers roll in for the dirtiest part of the build. Stay tuned. Week two brings a new set of challenges and a new set of volunteers who have a tough act to follow. Last week, we actually put over 600 man hours in this thing. Man, that's a lot. The team goes right to work with body pieces flying to all corners of the tech center for some of the most demanding labor yet. You're skimming with body putty, you're sanding, you're skimming some more, you're sanding, you're skimming some more, and you're sanding. To make it all happen, Tim called up a search and restore veteran and a few of his associates. Because I've been here twice before, and they kept giving me a hard time calling me Hollywood. So I'm like, I'll fix that. I'll get them all down here. <laughs> Tom showed up with a shadowy group of automotive assassins, the Road Kings. We tried to find out more, but their unofficial leader shut us down. The first rule of the Road Kings is to not talk about the Road Kings. So we talked to a fellow named Mad Dog, but got nowhere. OK, we're going to have to turn the camera off for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. I have no clue. When he told us how he got his nickname, Girl's dog bit me, I bit it back. We decided it was best just to leave him alone. Then we noticed a guy named Jethro. Uh, the Rogue Kings is a car club based out of Kokomo, Indiana. It's a family with a car club problem. If you're a car guy, you'd like to hang out, maybe drink a few beers, you're the same kind of guy I am. It seems these garage gangsters are more interested in paint guns than Tommy guns. In fact, they get together every Saturday and work on each other's cars for free. I wouldn't have it any other way, you know? I mean, when I work on somebody else's car, I work on it like it's mine. Like, if I was going to build that car for me, this is how I would do it. But you can't just show up with a project, parts, and a work order. Each member must put in their hours before their car is considered. When the time comes to pick the next project, the decision is very informal. We don't have meetings where we all sit around a big round table and say, everybody say aye. No dues, no meetings. There's no president. There is no boss. There's no nothing. Just a bunch of guys with a passion for hot rods who are honored to work on Shane's ride. He's not able to do it, but he's entrusting us to provide what his father wanted. I mean, that, that's huge. Well, I'm hoping they think, is that my old truck? I can't believe it, you know? <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a knockout truck, you know? I think you'll really like it. Tim fills in the low spots by laying down Rust Defender Primer donated by Auto Body Color and Supply. Then, hours and hours and hours of sanding. Well, dirty, hot, sweaty. Even Ian found a role he's qualified for, guide coat technician. When we're about ready for some honey to rattle camp. They need guide coat? I'm there. Yeah, sure, it's just spraying Duplicolor dry carbon guide coat product over a primer job. But if I'm not there to do that, it's not going to get done. To donate parts or to volunteer for an upcoming build, just go to searchandrestoretv.com and click on Application. Think there's something wrong with Ian? I thought so. A new day brings renewed energy and lots and lots of work to be done. While we were doing some body work, we found some lower damage in it. A bunch of lead was in here from the last time. So where the metal is stretched, we're gonna pull the dent out. We weld these studs to it, so we're gonna put a whole bunch of these on this dent. Now that we got the studs welded on, we're gonna use this stud puller. 
and we're going to yank the dents out until we get it pretty well flush. And then we'll work the metal a little bit so we have less filler in it. So we're getting ready for the last go around of the rust defender primer. Put a little bit more thinner in it so it'll lay down a little flatter so we got a little less work when we do the final sand. To help fire up the Ford, Powermaster Performance hand delivered a fully chromed starter and alternator, and keeping with the spirit of the build, all fully donated. The truck comes apart for the last stage of primer sanding. Expert technique here is a must. There's going to be lots of black paint on this pickup, which is very unforgiving to any flaws in the bodywork. When I think of timeless classic hot rods, the Hot Rod Garage guys from Maryland come to my list every single time. So I called them up and I was surprised. They jumped, dropped everything, came and helped. Dean Alexander and owner Ray Bartlett drove up in this 32 all-steel roadster. These guys build nothing but classics. We primarily do pre-48 street rods. We do some, now do some muscle car stuff. 72 and older, nothing newer than that. Pretty much everything, turnkey projects, do upholstery in-house, everything but build the engine. My dad taught me to say Chevy truck. That was the first words I said. Uh, he had me learn the Chevy firing order at like four or five years old. He, he got me into it at 14, helped me buy my first car, and we fixed it up, and he taught me how to do body work by taking a bat to the hood of it and told me to fix it. Uh, yeah, that's where it started. From skilled craftsmen who make paint and body look pretty, to a guy who gets paid to crush things. Extreme 4x4's Ian Johnson donned a new uniform to spray on a little urethane undercoating. I'm a little nervous with Ian with a spray device and a suit and him going in the paint booth. When Tim watches someone else paint for very long, I don't know if you want another coat on these. He gets the itch to jump back in the booth himself. The gang tears down the chassis in a blur of activity so that Tim can start shooting color. You got a complete new chassis from Fat Man. Everything fresh, nothing rusty, nothing crusty. For once on this thing, something we didn't have to repair rust on, Ian decided to do the bottom of the body with all the Raptor line black. He thought the green chassis would look really nice. So I painted it all green and I put some satin clear on it. 